All right, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. Welcome back here. It is the Earth Master on this end of the weekend. Unfortunately, it's Sunday, October 22nd, 2023, about 11.09 p.m. here in California, where it's been raining most of the day here in my area. We picked up uh, just about well, a little bit over an inch of rain outside of Chico here where I live. Latest activity shows a 2.6 on the Earthquake 3D globe. Let's see what's going on there. In the California area, this is around the Ridgecrest area, just north here, near the Coso Junction volcanic field. 1.5 kilometers for that earthquake. Handful of smaller microquakes there in the last 24 hours or so. Not really see anything major going on here across the West Coast. Uh, really no unusual activity. Uh, we did see a little bit of movement up here south of Seattle uh, in the Puget Sound region of Washington. 29 kilometers deep for a 3.1. Uh, it's just above the 2.5 threshold, a little bit of activity across the Cascade Mountain Range as well. Uh, I was looking at the uh, seismograph stations here. Let me bring those back up. I've seen a little spike of an earthquake in the last few minutes here across Yellowstone. That's going to be this little spike here on the Lake Yellowstone station. So let's see what's going on up there across the Yellowstone area of Wyoming. Um. Uh, doesn't look like much. Uh, there's, like I say, a little spike of an earthquake on that seismograph station. It could be something as small as this, but uh, in general, earthquake activity is minimal, to say the least, out there uh, in the uh, Wyoming area. As uh, far as the Hawaii area goes, a little bit of movement across the um, Kilauea volcano once again. No major changes noted. Uh, still getting some activity down here across the Pahala area, down there at about 30 kilometers or so. As far as any major uptick uh, across this area in the last 24 hours, well, we did see a 5.0 here just off the coast of China, off of the plate boundary near Hong Kong. Uh, that uh, earthquake occurring about 10 kilometers deep or so. I still think uh, with all that swarming that we've seen here uh, with the Izu Trench and whatnot over the past couple weeks or so, you remember all that swarming that kicked up? We haven't seen that adjustment out here across the western areas of this Filipino plate here. This That's going to be this area right here. And plate tectonics tells us uh, and shows us that the general stress up here, if you add further strain here against the Izu Trench, which is in this area, that stress should be accumulated up here against the area south of Japan into the Taiwan area. Um, so I'm still kind of expecting some further large-scale movement in this area. Just... Uh, it's not uh, taken place yet. Uh, one earthquake up in China, 5.0 from earlier this morning. Also, we've seen this oddball earthquake here south of Australia. That's a 4.4 off of the plate boundary. That uh, earthquake there, uh, general sign of earthquake stra or a strain out here against the plate, the Australia plate. We have seen some earthquake activity outside of Melbourne recently. Remember that swarm of activity in between Tas uh, Tasmania and New Zealand here a month or so ago. Uh, so things are definitely on the uh, stress side out here. Not a whole lot going on through New Zealand. I'm kind of waiting on that area to show some movement. Let's go ahead and check out the Earthquake 3D globe here. It looks like we did see a handful of earthquakes down here. Twos and threes uh, kicking off. Stand by here for a second while I bring up the GeoNet servers. Uh, for New Zealand, it looks like eight hours ago, 2.4. And of course, some smaller earthquakes here in the last few hours. It looks like a 3.2 North Island two hours ago. But overall, you know, these we, we could talk about microquake earthquakes all day along a plate boundary, which is very typical. Uh, there's not a whole lot of unusual activity to note, though, across the New Zealand area for now. Uh, this is the uh, earthquake drums out here showing some of that activity the threes and whatnot down in south island area but for now no major earthquake activity uh, that's striking the area did see some earthquake activity into the fiji islands area south of there into the tonga trench look at these earthquakes 542 kilometers deep and uh, another one down there 537 kilometers deep so some deeper activity triggering down there to the subduction zone um, let's see, further across the, the areas of the Mediterranean, one earthquake here earlier this morning in Greece. The Atlantic Ocean looks pretty quiet for now, not a whole lot popping off, popping off there. Uh, at least according to the USGS, well, a little earthquake activity there across the Azores, it looks like, along this triple point uh, boundary. 
Uh, but aside from that, um, clustering taking place here across the Java Trench, making its way northward. We haven't really seen any earthquake activity here across the Andaman Sea. This is a little seismic gap. Been watching this here over the past couple days. Stretch up here from the Indonesia Islands northward along this plate boundary, but we're lacking this activity right here. So we should see that fill in uh, soon. Aside from that, looks like a little further aftershock activity there into the Melbourne, well, outside the Melbourne area. This is way down, well, yeah, Melbourne Melbourne area, it looks like. Uh, this is looks like a 2.6 and 3.7, but overall general stress out here against the Australia area is quite high. Uh, so we'll continue to watch the New Zealand area. I think that plays a major part there on the, on that plate boundary. Uh, let's see, South America region, a 2.9 and a couple other smaller quakes out there. Not a whole lot going on for now across the Caribbean plate. Space weather activity. Look at that. You couldn't even get a more flat line activity, uh, than we can right now. Look at that. That is just crazy. Uh, and this is a little scary. 25% chance for a sea flare. <laughs> Something happened here recently. And I believe it's got to do with the uh, the polar magnetic fields here kind of uh, reversing. We, there was an article here in the uh, spaceweather.com website. I posted a few videos back here about the uh, polar uh, magnetic fields flipping. That has a major adverse effect on the sunspots. And uh, right now, this is uh, unusual, right? To go through a solar maximum and have this very minimal activity. Um, so I do believe that plays a part uh, with that magnetic reversal going on up there uh, across the uh, magnetic fields of the sun. We have to continue to watch this and see how this plays out. Uh, looking at the Earth-facing side of the sun right now shows uh, not a whole lot. We do have one sunspot here across the eastern limb of the sun that... Uh, uh, is not named yet. Uh, the UV filter ray shows a little bit of brighter features out here on this area on the eastern limb. But overall, things will continue to stay quiet for now. Uh, goodness, <laughs> I can't believe that. 25% chance of a sea flare uh, as we're in a solar maximum. That's crazy. Not a whole lot of auroras in the forecast. Uh, and the aurora forecast at least looks pretty minimal right now. We did see a pretty massive uh, prominence eruption, two of them to be exact there over the past 24 hours or so. We did have one on the northern section here, uh, northeastern sec section of the sun. Let me bring this up. And also one a short time later on the southern hemisphere of the sun. Not earth directed whatsoever. Uh, those are some uh, particle uh, plasma and whatnot being shot off there from the sun. But none of that is uh, directed towards Earth, unfortunately. Otherwise, we could be looking at some uh, pretty awesome uh, solar weather events in the coming nights. But uh, for now, that's that is the uh, that's kind of what's happening out there. It is quiet in terms of flare activity, but in the prominence eruptions, that's a little different story. We'll have to see how the sun behaves with the uh, magnetic uh, reversal and solar maximum coming up here. All right, uh, weather forecast. Goodness, uh, like I said, we picked up almost, I actually picked up over an inch of a rain, over an inch of rain uh, in the last 12 hours here in Northern California. It just pretty much like a cloud over my house that uh, just dumped rain. And uh, I'm very appreciative of the uh, moisture, that's for sure. Uh, that has since died off, and uh, we're looking at drier conditions out here across the West Coast for tomorrow. Uh, let me show you guys the assemble out here. Uh, there's our low pressure system off the West Coast, or uh, w centered over California, I should say. High pressure building out here across the Great Lakes area. That's going to continue to enhance out here, bringing some warmer and drier conditions for the folks out here in the eastern half of the country. We have a massive low pressure system dipping down into the Oregon, Washington, and my neck of the woods here as we head into midweek this coming week, bringing with it some Arctic air, some cold temperatures. And that's just going to sit here and kind of uh, uh, form over this area for the majority of uh, the later half of uh, this coming week here. 
looks like it's going to kick in roughly around a Wednesday or so. It lasts through Thursday and Friday, Saturday as well, before getting scooted out of here uh, by a high pressure building up into the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, but that is uh, th th that's rather interesting here. We're going to look at some very cold temperatures, well below average here for the West Coast. Talking about highs in the low 60s. <laughs> that's definitely well below average for our time of year here in Northern California. I've seen highs in October in the hundreds. So we'll take the 60s over hundreds for sure. High pressure building again, like I said, out here across the eastern portion of the country. We'll continue to watch that and report back on it. But it uh, looks like, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of happy. I like it when it rains and it rained quite a bit today. So I am very appreciative of all the rain that took place. Uh, we forgot to check Hawaii. Far as the tilt meters go, let's go over here and double check that. See what we got going on. Uh, it currently sits at a yellow and advisory. That's just due to somewhat of the elevated earthquake activity. Uh, look at the tilt meters here, uh, UWE. Let me bring this up here real quick. See what we have here. Um, past two days of activity, we're noticing a decline of activity and decline of earthquake activity. This is the inflation data here at the summit area of Kilauea Volcano. But overall, the uh, the trend here over the past 30 days or so has been on the in uh, inflation side, meaning uptick, uplift of that uh, area. So we're still continuing to see magma accumulate below the surface. Just a matter of time before we see uh, a further influx of magma and the uh, you know, potential uh, fissures erupting or opening up and erupting there south of the summit. I believe that's where it's going to take place next, but we'll continue to watch that. Uh, as far as Hurricane Center goes, we've got Norma down here. That's, uh, well, it's kind of just uh, sitting down there, bringing with it uh, a little bit of precipitation out there into the Mexico area, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, Tammy is out here as uh, far as it showing any signs of major strengthening. It doesn't look like it. Um, not uh, any effect here to the eastern portion of the country. It's been a little unusual, uh, even with all these warmer temperatures out there in the, in the Atlantic recently. Just not a, uh, it, I don't know. It was an active year, but uh, in a way it wasn't. In terms of uh, earth, uh, the uh, hurricanes making landfall out here, it's very unusual. So, um, yeah, crazy stuff going on with the weather and the climate here recently. All right, folks, I am going to jump off here. Um, looks like a little S wave coming here in here to this station. We're by the Thailand area. Let's see what we got going on here. I don't think it's at 3.9, but it looks like some type of earthquake activity occurring here um, within that region. But still continue to watch this area across the western areas of the Filipino plate. I still think... Uh, all that earthquake activity we've seen here recently across the Izu Trench is uh, kind of give us a sign of maybe something of what's building out here. But who knows? We'll continue to watch that. Have a good night, folks. Stay safe out there. And um, we'll chat you guys tomorrow for Monday. Have a good night.